Good morning and welcome back to the 120th. Uh, a couple of videos ago, Lomography very kindly sent me some films to test. We had a few rolls of Lady Grey 400 and a few rolls of Berlin 400. Conclusion I came to at the end of that was Lady Grey really nice, Berlin quite grainy, lacking in contrast. Here's a quick reminder of what the films look like side by side. Here we have Lady Grey on the left here and we have Berlin upside down on the right. So very different looking negatives and you can really see the uh, the the loss of contrast and the darker uh, film base on the Berlin. When we scanned them, Berlin was very grainy, um, lacking in a bit of contrast. But towards the end of those videos, I did say that it's quite difficult to draw concrete conclusions about things like grain when all we're doing is digitally scanning these negatives. Obviously, the digital process does introduce some elements of digital noise, uh, unavoidably. Uh, it also uh, can introduce pixelation depending on how closely you're trying to look at that grain uh, and how uh, high resolution your digital images are. So I said that the best thing that we could do is take these out to the darkroom and do some proper prints with them. So that's what we're doing today. Right then I'm pretty much set up and ready to rock. Um, we've got the enlarger up here which is the Intrepid uh, Enlarger, as you've seen before on the channel. I've got my chemicals out. Um, we're going to be developing our sheets in uh, Ilford PQ Universal today. I have all my negatives from all the shoots here. Well, we'll start with the Lady Grey, we'll print a couple of those, and then we will move on to the Berlin, and we'll see how they come out. First one up, I think we're going to do this one. I was quite happy with that when we looked at the scans, so let's do that first. Uh, see how that comes out uh, with zero contrast. Let's increase the contrast actually. Start with a two. Let's add a minute. Oh, so it's looking pretty good. All right then, I will um, put it through the process and I'll switch it, switch it back on when we uh, when we have a chance to have a look. Right then. I mean, as expected, that one looks fantastic. I'm not going to mess around too long with that one. I'm going to go move on from there to uh, my favourite one from the shoot. Yeah, it's this one here, this one at the bottom. So let's get that loaded into the negative carrier. Right then, let's have a quick look at that one under normal lights. Okay. I mean, that is a, uh, a glorious image. Done um, with a tiny bit more contrast. There's lots wrong with it. It was skew if in the uh, in the frame. There's dust on it. Could have done with an extra second. Maybe I'll do this one again. Yeah, I'm going to do this one again. Let me just get this lined up, and we'll uh, we'll go again on that one. Because I think that'd be a nice one to give to Rob. I think I don't know if he likes it or not, but I like it. Right then, I'm pretty chuffed with that one. Uh, I would say is pretty much bang on. Now we are moving on to the Berlin images. So these are the ones we really want to see. So we'll start with the first shoot where I really wasn't sure what the hell was happening. And we're gonna go with this one. So let's get that into the holder and let's get it lined up. Focus. Now I'm gonna give it a little bit longer. I'm just gonna go straight in with the print, fuck it. No, no I'm not, I'm gonna do a test strip. So let's get focused, test strip, because it will also be interesting to see the difference in exposure. Right, that test strip is showing something like about five seconds again. So not majorly different from the, um, from the Lady Grey. All right, start with six seconds and I'm gonna crank up the contrast to 2.5, so just half a, half a stage more contrast. And let's go for it. Let's print this. Well, well, well. Very interesting. So this is how it came out. As before, not unappealing, I think. I am going to leave the exposure time the same uh, and crank that contrast right up to the top. Let's see what that does. Really not an unpleasant picture at all. Although, there's a finger mark on it which I can see, and quite a lot of dust. So I wonder whether we um, might pull it out. No, I think let's move on to some of the shots from, um, from the second outing. 
some of the close-ups from there. Oh, I'll tell you what, we'll do the one of, um, of Beck jumping over a post. Let's do that one. Right then, uh, I have completed my last print, which didn't go very well. Let me show you here. Needed another couple of seconds. But that has to be the last one because I have run out of space to hang stuff. Uh, need to get some more of these clips. But anyway, I think we have um, we've done enough for us to draw some conclusions. Uh, so I'll leave those to dry overnight and uh, let's talk about them tomorrow. All right. Right then, I'm back inside. The prints are dry. There's some really nice ones there, actually. That's pretty chuffed. That is a firm favorite, that one. Really like that image. So I'll very happily uh, present that one to Rob when I next see him. But the big purpose of this was to see how the Berlin and the Lady Grey compare. Obviously on the negatives, the Lady Grey looks like there's loads more contrast, a uh, lot less grain, etc, etc. Um, and when we put the two through on the same settings, now bear in mind I wasn't having to add much contrast for this one. And this one is the Berlin without any more contrast added. And you can, I mean, it's kind of uh, exactly what you would expect, right? The, those, those are the results that you would expect from the negatives and how they looked. What was interesting though, is what happened when we really dialed in the contrast uh, and the difference in the two images and what we end up with. Now I would say that this one is actually a really nice image. I think it looks terrific. One thing that I talked about when we were scanning and I did say that it would be an issue in the darkroom as well, is that when a negative is very dark uh, and you're having to run those exposures for much longer to get a good image on the, on the paper, it highlights all the flaws in the image. And that is the big risk with this kind of thing. It's not that you can't get an image, it's not that you can't get a nice picture from it. It's just that exactly the same as with digital scanning. You're having to push the image so hard that it, it shows up its flaws. So there are there is a bit of dust on here, but the exposure time was much shorter. We have much whiter whites, and so uh, dust in those white areas is not visible. Um, this one, much longer exposure time, much less contrast within the image. And obviously when you dial in the contrast and you add contrast, you're not just adding contrast to the image, you're adding contrast to any imperfections. And that is, uh, at least one of the reasons why we have this very visible fingerprint over here. Obviously that is handling error on my part, but the point that I'm making here is that had there been a fingerprint on this one, in fact there may well be a fingerprint on this one, but I'm not adding so much contrast uh, that it shows it up. And that is the risk with a, with a low contrast image. Uh, both in scanning and in darkroom printing, is that when you beef it up, when you add to certain elements of it, whether you increase the exposure or you increase the contrast, you're adding contrast and exposure to everything. However, all of that, dust, finger marks, light leaks, um, can be solved by doing your job better, being a better photographer. What I really wanted to look at was the grain. We'll, we'll zoom into this a little bit. Frankly, if you were to put that on your wall, I think it looks fantastic. And for a portrait, this one is much sharper, much, much more contrast, but this one is a, if anything's potentially a nicer portrait. It's just softer on the face. In fact, quite by chance, they probably do suit the way round that they've ended up being. So this is a nicer film stock for portraits of women. And this potentially a better film stock for portraits of grafty bearded men. When, when you want to bring out all of that wonderful texture, you want the, the texture in the image um, to take over the grain. Whereas with this one, I want less texture and therefore the inherent grain in the image uh, gives the picture texture whilst masking the actual texture of your subject. Not that, you know, Beck's texture is wrong. Uh, let's abandon that one before that gets out of hand. Long story short, the grain when we were scanning, I did not like. That same grain, same negatives, take them into the darkroom, and actually, they look terrific. 
Really chuffed with that one. Um, to obviously ignore my darkroom imperfections. That's wonky in the frame. The borders are all over the shop. Uh, ignore that uh, and just focus on the performance of the negatives. This one turned out all right as well. A little bit dark maybe, but, um, and that one. Like I said before, I mean, if anything, the lack of grain kind of takes away from the character a little bit. You know, it makes it feel a little bit too modern, if I, if I might be so bold as to say that. The grain in the Berlin kind of falls into the same category as the, um, the Verito lenses, you know, where, where you can manipulate the soft focus to kind of smooth over the edges and get a, a, an image which is perhaps less true to the subject but is more pleasing to look at. So that is my conclusion. Um, and that is that Berlin Kino, very grainy still, but definitely performs better in the darkroom than it does with digital scanning. Um, and I think that, you know, one of these arguments that we're always going on about is whether or not is it acceptable to you know, make Lightroom adjustments to digital scans of negatives or whether that kind of defeats the object and kind of ruins your analog workflow and your, your truth to the analog ways. But it's always worth bearing in mind that in a pure analog process, where you take this into the darkroom and you print it properly, there is manipulation that can be done. Um, and, and it is possible to increase the contrast and, and mess with the image. So, you know, potentially had I done that, had I tweaked, had I made a couple of kind of just control tweaks in Lightroom, I may have been more keen on the digital scans. Anyway, uh, that is it for today. I think that was a very useful process. I'm glad I took them out to the darkroom and did some prints with them. Very happy with the results. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Do, do leave me a comment to let me know your thoughts on, on today's video uh, and those films and how those prints turned out. Um, loads more coming up on the channel, so if you're not currently subscribed, please do subscribe. Next up, potentially Mamiya RB67. Uh, flash with film, wildlife photography on film with the Bronica ETRS. Uh, we've got more black and white paper reversal coming up. I've got some uh, large format lens tests that I want to do. Uh, Fuji GX680, uh, some gear reviews. Honestly, it's jam packed. The schedule for February and March is overflowing. So please do subscribe uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye.